Oh, good evening, 14th of December. Nice frosty night out there. Um, of course, it could be morning when you're watching this video or afternoon. So good morning, good evening and uh, good night. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to make a quick video regarding switch mode power supplies, uh, specifically repurposed server power supplies. You know, the ham community is um is very very um particular when it comes to their power supplies you know you've got those that swear by linear and linear only you've got those that say um you know switch mode power supplies absolutely no problems and to be honest the ones that are purpose built for amateur radio they shouldn't be any problems i'm not saying there aren't they shouldn't um repurposed ones you know that they, they can be noisy but generally not now, um, the world is now absolutely uh, rife with noisy power supplies, switch mode power supplies. They tend to be chargers, phone chargers, uh, power supplies for gaming consoles and all sorts. But, you know, uh, it's, uh, there's good, bad and ugly and everything. So this was just a quick video on uh, uh, one of the favourites that I use. And... Um, uh, I, I like the HP power supplies. Uh, some Dell ones work, some Sun Oracle ones work. Um, yeah, they, they work with varying degrees of success. Um, I'll find, me personally, I'll find that the HP ones work very, very well. I mean, you'll get incredible amount of power from a, a very small package, very small footprint. And uh, I like the DPS power supplies. I run several DPS power supplies that have been modified for amateur radio use. One of them, I think it was the DPS 800, or maybe uh, it was bigger than that. I use it on um, a TS590S. It's uh, modified so that it's variable, and it will sit happily at 13.7 volts all day long uh, without overheating. You know, it can be used and abused. Uh, this particular one is the HP, let's give you a shot if we can of the label, will that pick it up, there we go, it's the um, HST uh, NS PL29, I think the PL29 is the bit that um, you're interested in, but uh, there are very, as you can see by my hand, you know, they've got a very small footprint, but you know, the, these, these are rated around uh, 60 amps if i remember rightly yeah 62.5 amps at 12 and a half volts um they can be modified for a bit more but i find 12 and a half is absolutely fine for what i need they're a very rf quiet and uh they need just a little bit of work to uh get going so say so freeze frame on that um that uh label just in case uh, you didn't catch me say the model number but here we go Here's another thing to freeze frame on. Now then, first uh, a caveat and a disclaimer. I'm not telling you, showing you how to convert one of these power supplies. I'm showing you a power supply that I have converted. Uh, you do this at your own risk. If you don't know uh, about um, uh, SIMPS power supplies, you know, if you've got no knowledge of them, I'd say that uh, maybe it's not a project for you. It's, uh, you know, they carry very high voltages inside. And um, if you open one up and you start stabbing around, uh, one of two things are happening. Uh, you're either going to make it go pop or you're going to be leaping six feet into the air, screaming blue murder. But uh, there you go. So you can see uh, this is looking at the top and I'll show you the contacts on a real life one in a moment. Um, all you need is two 1K resistors. And what we're doing there is uh, we're switching the uh, power supply on and um, we're setting the fan speed. Uh, some of them, they will run at you know, full speed and uh, be quite noisy, acoustically noisy, not RF noisy. Um, but you can um, modify most set power supplies so that the fans will run um on supply and demand so they'll you'll you'll hear these they're very very quiet and um they will ramp up very slightly as they get warm but you really got to be abusing one of these to get them to go warm um uh one thing that you can do you can series parallel power supplies 
Um, I haven't done it. I don't need to. But, you know, you can get yourself some incredible um, uh, voltage and uh, power, uh, current combinations, which will give you immense um, uh, power in watts. Uh, the radio controlled fraternity, they, they love them as... Um, very high speed chargers for their lipo cells it's something that you know i haven't explored i don't need to at this uh, time so you can see if we look at the label side you can see the contacts there i can't remember off the top of my head the numbering but on the right hand side that big contact is your uh, positive the one next to it so the big one in the middle is your uh, negative and then you've got um six smaller contacts on the uh, left hand side now let me give you some light here there you go that's better now you can see them okay and what we need to do for these power supplies to switch on and uh to give you an output you have to use those two 1k resistors now i'm just going to prove a point that if we plug in uk 250 volts Fan's not running, green LED isn't on, and if we can see, uh, I've got the voltmeter running here, um, you can see it's, uh, it's nothing, absolutely nothing. So, let's just unplug that, and put it to one side. Uh, that was just for, you know, illustrative purposes only. This one I've already modified. Um, I was going to do a how-to and I thought to myself, do you know what, I open myself up for all sorts of nasties. If I start showing people this is what you do, you know, I'm going to leave that for you. But um, this one here, you can see the two 1K resistors. One goes from this very first contact to the negative terminal and then the other resistor goes in between the shorter contact and the one directly to the right. I'll show you that again on paper. So there we was talking about looking at the label side of the uh, power supply. You've got your positive, your negative. And there, from the left-hand side contact to the negative, is a 1K resistor. And you don't need big resistors. Anything you've got in the junk box will be fine. Eighth watt, quarter watt, half watt. You go start bigger than that and they physically uh, you know, get cumbersome. And there you can see we've got the shorter contact and the contact next to it. Be very careful not to solder bridge across these. But, um, you know, you literally a quick swipe of the soldering iron and it's done. So that's that. And to prove a point, if we plug this one in, you can see uh, the LED is lit. The fan, you can barely hear. And this one should be, with a bit of luck, should be 12.25, something like that. What have we got there? 12.25 or 2. 12.28, 29, it's... It's not under load, so it's not going to be uh, perfect. But that will run a transceiver quite happily. That will run a transceiver all day long. And um, you'll get some uh, useful, uh, you, you know, for very cheap. You can buy these quite cheap surplus, relatively speaking, compared to other power supplies. Um, you know, it, it will give you maybe an emergency power supply or a backup power supply or whatever, you know, for your linear power supply. So let's do a bit of a real world thing here. So I've got this little light here just to give us some more light. Here tonight, we've got the IC7300. The IC7300 is powered by... Can we see this? We've got one of these. As you can see, I've used um, a soldered connection. Now, one thing I do use is habit. There is, <clears throat> there is there, where are we? Get it in shot. That there is a clip-on ferrite. 
it's sort of insurance and uh, there's our there's our fuses um, Icom do supply a filter anyway so we we'll plug it in light comes on we powered up and we're on the 80 meter band let's see if we can uh, get a reception report maybe but uh, let, first off let's find a null point where there's no signals as you can see we're using a long wire antenna it's 90 feet long and a temporary cable running across my kitchen going out into the uh, into the garden up to the nine to one un -un. and uh, that background noise you can hear will be my oldest daughter who's decided to get herself videoed for the night but she don't know it she wasn't in shot but there you go so we've got s5 s6 noise peaking at s7 it's about right for 80 meters i'd say uh, sometimes it's a little bit lower I mean, the type of radio that you're using is obviously going to make some difference. The IC7300, obviously being an SDR, has got um, some very, very good uh, noise cancelling ability. But as I say, I've used one on a TS590S. I've used these particular power supplies on an IC740. Uh, you'll see my videos on YouTube for that. Um... What else? What else can we say? Yeah, I've used it on quite a few radios. Yaesu uh, FT757GX, um, the Tentec Arga C525. Uh, I've used one of these power supplies with that, and none of them suffer with noise. So. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll tell you one thing we have got, my kitchen LED lighting. Let's turn that off. It is known to cause noise, but more so on the higher bands. I doubt whether that's made any difference. Well, I don't know, maybe it's made a bit of a difference. I suppose I should use the band scope, shouldn't I really? Band is a bit quiet tonight. Let's just uh, do the quick tune. Okay. Oh, I think what we're, we're hearing here is no RF hash 
from the power supply itself. Okay, that's the main thing. Right, I think we'll come back to this. I'm going to find a place uh, clearer and then CQ and uh, just get a reception report and uh, just prove that the transmission's okay. Yeah,